there will always be a best. Throughout history, these are always like the things, the items, the players, and the people who are really remembered more than anything else in terms of their specific category. Some of these in Yu-Gi-Oh! would be the best card, the best deck, the best player, and of course, the best archetype. I've done a lot of thinking on that last one, because the best deck is questioned, like, explored pretty often, but the best archetype specifically is a separate conversation entirely. The Nightmare Archetype, in my personal opinion, is the best archetype ever printed. This may sound abnormal to some of you, I, I totally get that. Generally, the Nightmare cards are not really summed up in the same way we typically like consider and analyze archetypes. Understand I'm not saying the nine unique Nightmare monsters form a tier zero meta threat like none ever seen before, like something like Spiral or Pepe. Obviously not. But I do believe no archetype before or after it has been or will be so splashed, so popular, and so incredibly meta-warping. Of the nine Nightmare Monsters, only one has seen little to no play on Topic Deckless. That one is Nightmare Incarnation Idly, we really don't talk about her, she sucks. Uh, but all eight other Nightmare cards have not only seen Top Cut representation, each monster has been in quite literally countless Top Cut decks. At this point, the number is probably in the thousands, possibly more so. I'm, I'm very bad at math, and quantifying that kind of statistic is really hard for me to like put in my brain, but... It's insane the amount of representation all of these cards have had. In just a minute, I'm going to go card by card and analyze why each one is so good individually. But to say the Nightmare Archetype is a popular one is an understatement. Each card offers not only incredible utility, but has cemented itself in the metagame at one point or another. So without further ado, the analysis. First on the chopping block is arguably the most important card in the Nightmare family, and the monster who represents the musical note for Mata, Nightmare Mermaid. Mermaid is a Link 1 fiend with a thousand attack points with the following summoning requirements and effect. Mermaid requires one Nightmare monster except herself, and if it's Link summoned, you can discard a card and special summon one Nightmare monster from your deck. And then, if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw a card can only use the effect once per turn, and monsters on the field lose a thousand attack and defense unless they are co-linked. Obviously, Mermaid has not seen any recent meta play. Being banned will do that to a card, but when it was legal, I genuinely cannot remember a time when it was not being abused. Nightmare Mermaid was a card built to be broken, in my opinion, and it only dominated more and more as it aged. It went from being abused in Goki and then to Orcist, and neither one was really pleasant for whoever was on the receiving end. Whether you were being locked out of the extra through Ibli or Orcus comboed through Orchestrated Nightmare, both routes demonstrated the sheer power of Mermaid and her targets. She rightfully earned her ban, and in my personal opinion, can be marked as one of the most powerful extra deck monsters ever printed, purely because of her affiliation with Orcist and how much she could facilitate by herself. Next up is the Nightmare Monster represented by the double repetition mark in terms of music, Nightmare Goblin. Goblin is a Link 2 Fiend with 1300 attack and the following summoning requirements and effect. Goblin requires two monsters with different names to be summoned, and when he is Link summoned during your turn you can discard a card. If he's co-linked, when the effect is activated you get to draw one. Also, during your main phase, the turn he uses this effect, you can normal summon one monster from your hand to your zone this card points to, in addition to your normal summoner set. You can only apply this effect once per turn, and neither player can target co-linked monsters you control with card effects. Goblin is obviously a good card, but at first look you really wouldn't be able to comprehend like the amount of degeneracy this card facilitated and protected during its time legally allowed in the TCG. Not only did this card allow ridiculous amounts of extra extension in decks like Warrior Goki, but the ability to target protect a complete extra link board within Master Rule 4 made certain boards near unbreakable game 1, and possibly even game 2 without the presence of like a blowout card like Raw Sphere Mode. Goblin was banned for his sins within decks that spout out link monsters, and his target protection really gave extra link decks the extra layers of defense they needed to avoid simple answers to their setup from the side or main deck. 
The utility and power a goblin offers is not to be understated, though in all honesty I think that of the Nightmare Link monsters he's probably the worst just because he doesn't offer as much utility as the rest. Now it's time for the most popular Nightmare, and probably the most widely used card of Master Rule 4. With the representation of the musical note coda, Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix is a fiend Link 2 with 1900 attack and the following summoning requirements and effect. Phoenix requires two monsters with different names to be summoned, and when it is Link Summoned, you can discard a card, then target one spell or trap your opponent controls, and destroy it. If this card is co-linked when the effect was activated, you can draw a card. You can only use this effect once per turn, and co-linked monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Phoenix has a simple effect, discarding a card to destroy your spell or trap on the field. It's virtually just a mystical space typhoon from the extra deck. Phoenix is not unfair inherently. Two monsters investment and a discard for some removal is not unheard of, but just because it isn't unfair doesn't downplay the impact of this card on the metagame. Having a generic option for back row removal in any deck has made Phoenix one of the most popular, if not the most popular, Link monster ever printed. The utility it provides allows decks to play through unknown problems, out floodgates, and set up their graveyard. They can remove unwanted monsters from their board, including tokens for this summon, and not every deck is able to play a rank 4 toolbox in order to access the normal instant and consistent removal for cards like There Can Be Only One or Summon Limit, and without Phoenix, cards like that would go uncontested in a lot of scenarios. There is also something to be said about the battle protection Phoenix gives for extra link plays, and that was certainly relevant at one time or another, but obviously the most important part about this card is the utility it offered every player equally. In my opinion, the creation of Nightmare Phoenix was one of the best decisions Konami made designing cards with, within the Master Rule 4 era. If you play this game competitively, you own at least a copy of this card, and that says a lot, I think. Phoenix obviously does have a counterpart. You all know of it, and I even considered talking about them together because of the parallels they share, but I felt they both deserved their own section. Represented by the musical note Delcino, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, Nightmare Cerberus is a Link 2 Fiend with 1600 attack and the following summoning requirements and effect. Cerberus requires two monsters with different names to be summoned, and when he is Link Summoned, you can discard a card and target one special summon monster in your opponent's main monster zone and destroy it. Then, if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you get to draw a card. You can only use this effect once per turn, and co-linked monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. To say the least, this card isn't a direct counterpart to Phoenix. The discard effect has more restriction, as obviously a direct counterpart would allow the destruction of any monster the opponent controls, making Cerberus in a lot of ways strictly worse than Phoenix in terms of versatility. However, Cerberus is not a bad card by any stretch of the imagination, and his utility is still insane. He is widely used because of that to this day. The ability to out tons of different problem monsters on the field comes up regularly in a bunch of different matchups across the board. What Cerberus is actually used for the most uh, in the current metagame uh, is his ability to destroy massive Nibiru tokens you give the opponent that you couldn't otherwise out. Uh, it sounds silly, but genuinely, when you give your opponent a 9,000-9,000 token and you don't have a Cerberus in your extra deck to out it, and then your opponent kills you with it, Cerberus looks a whole lot nicer. Same with Phoenix, the protection from card effects does come up, and it has, especially when extra link decks were more popular and relevant, uh, but the effect is obviously not nearly as important as the utility Cerberus offers. Next on the list is one of the prettiest secret rare cards I have ever seen. Represented musically by the open pedal, Nightmare Unicorn is a Link 3 Fiend with 2200 attack and the following summoning requirements and effect. Unicorn needs two plus monsters with different names to be summoned, and when it is Link Summoned, you can discard a card, target a card on the field, and return it to deck. Then, if this card was co-linked when that effect was activated, you get to draw a card. You can only use the effect once per turn, and while any co-linked Nightmare monsters are on the field, for your normal draw in your draw phase, you draw one card for each different card name among those co-linked Nightmare monsters, instead of drawing just one. 
Unicorn is the best Link monster ever printed, and I truly don't <laughs> think anyone can argue me on that point. You'd be hard pressed to find topping deck lists of the Master Roll 4 or even the Master Roll 5 era that did not play this card, regardless of the deck. Unicorn takes the best form of removal in the game, shuffling, and makes it generic to any deck that can produce three monsters in a discard. The utility within this card is beyond fantastic, and the fact that nowadays you can like use it to link climb into access code talker is an even bigger talking point to the merit of this card. The draw effect of Unicorn is an effect that is typically understated and underutilized, but it does have a very important use in the modern metagame. As niche as it sounds, when a player is being stuck under Mystic Mine and unable to activate monster effects, they do need a way to dig for an out like Cosmic Cyclone or Mystical Space Typhoon. And setting up a Co-Link Nightmare Unicorn in Phoenix is the draw power needed a lot of the time to find that mandatory out before you die to burn. Unicorn has also been played recently as a target to summon off of IP Mascarena. And the strength of Unicorn as an interruption can often end a, a player's turn just by itself. Unicorn is an absolutely fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh card. And if you don't own one, the chances are you probably don't play this game. And at that point, I don't really understand why you're listening to me talk right now. A la Breve is the musical note that is represented by Nightmare Griffin. My apologies if I'm butchering that. Uh, Griffin is a Link 4 Fiend with 2500 attack and the following summoning requirements and effect. When it is Link summoned, you can discard a card, target a spell or trap in your grave, and set it to your field but it cannot be activated the turn it is set. Then, if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw a card. It's a once per turn effect, and special summoned monsters on the field cannot activate their effects unless they are linked. Griffin is a strange card, like genuinely weird in comparison with what all the other nightmare links do. But just because his utility is niche doesn't dilute the power that he offers, and good lord, has Griffin been abused at times? Griffin has histori historically been used for two things. A solid floodgate effect to add to an extra link setup, and the infamous Curious into Griffin play. Let me elaborate, and if you don't know, Curious the Light Sworn Dominion is a link 3 that enables the foolish burial effect of any card from the main deck. Then you would link up into a link to Griffin that allows players to set up whatever floodgate they choose for the upcoming turn. Paired with the already somewhat oppressive Griffin floodgate-like effect, is fairly strong. And Griffin has always been a card that I expect to see abused. And I would not be surprised if in the future he sees a ban for some degenerate combo that he facilitates. We're on to the main deck monsters, and the first of the two that I'm going to talk about is Orchestrated Nightmare, a level 7 dark machine with 100 attack and 2000 defense, and the following effect. He cannot be destroyed by battle with a link monster. You can banish this card from your grave, targeting a face-up monster on the field, with the restriction that you cannot special summon monsters except dark monsters for the rest of the turn. Also, you can send one dark machine from your deck to the grave except Orcus Nightmare, and if you do, the monster that you targeted gets attack equal to the level of the monster sent to the grave times 100, until the end of the turn, of course. And it is a once per turn effect. This card is obviously not as generically usable like the rest of the Nightmare cards. But nevertheless, this card definitely ruled the metagame for multiple formats and prompted the ban of Nightmare Mermaid by itself. Orchestrated Nightmare being a target to summon off of Nightmare Mermaid has always been the most problematic thing with this card. And with the release of Orchestrated Nightmare, Mermaid did become a one card starter to the infamous Orcus combo. A combo ending with a disgusting amount of interrupts for the initial investment that ended up landing Mermaid on the Forbidden and Limited list. If you do want to learn more about the history of Orcist, make sure to watch my last video where I do talk about it in depth, but the TLDR is that this card offers an incredible amount of value uh, and has impacted the metagame in many, many ways. Finishing off, I want to talk about my absolute favorite Nightmare Monster, and probably the most interesting one in terms of card design. The monster represented by the musical note, the Trouble Clef, Nightmare Corruptor, Ibli. Ibli is a cyber uh, level 2 effect monster with 0 attack and 0 defense with the following effect. 
When it is normal summoned, you get to target a Link Monster in your grave and special summon it to your field so that it points to this card, but change its attack to zero and negate its effects. You cannot special summon monsters except Link Monsters while Ipley's on your field, and if this card in its owner's control is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card to your opponent's field in the fence position. You can only use her effect once per turn. So after a first read, uh, this effect, it, it seems to be a strange card. It offers a strange utility in locking your opponent out of the extra if you link her off, and clearly her normal summon effect is good when resolved, but what makes Ibli so so good is just the name. The ability to use Ibli as a link one play into Nightmare Mermaid was commonplace during certain periods of Orcus format. The utility she provided not only shut down cards like Nibiru or Gamma, but after resolution, the ability to chain block a mermaid from cards like Ash Blossom and Ghost Ogre is more relevant than it may seem. Uh, it is also important to note that Orcus was not the only meta deck to abuse Ibli. Um, meta relevant Goki combos around 2018 2019 would summon Ibli off Mermaid at times and establish an extra link, and because of Ibli, would lock the opponent out of the extra deck entirely, and special summoning as a mechanic was gone for them. Though, at a glance, Ibli seems like a strange card, she certainly has proved herself strong in alliance with Mermaid in the past. Each Nightmare Monster, besides Idli, obviously, we don't talk about her, uh, has a history within the metagame, and has made its mark on Yu-Gi-Oh! in one way or another. There has never been an archetype this strong before, and I'm tempted to say, in all honesty, there probably never will be. Till next time, I love you all. Goodbye.